My father started Oberg Steel in 1924 as a scrapyard. He had various scrap accounts, maybe a half a dozen, a dozen scrap accounts in the area. And he also bought cars that had been in accidents and he torched up equipment in the farms in the area. What he did is he separated the scrap properly and then sold the scrap to Shavoni, who sent it to the mills in Pittsburgh. So he had a scrapyard. As a matter of fact, my birth certificate, uh, his occupation is Junker, J-U-N-K-E-R. You don't see that very often anywhere. Right? So he started in 24, from 1924 to 1929. My father had a lot of scrap. Okay? And when the Great Depression came in in 1929, you had hobos riding the, uh, the rails. And my mother and father lived in a house which very close to the, the land there, actually as part of, part of the land. And my mother grew vegetables and had chicken coop and so forth. So it became known by the hobos as a place to stop and get a meal, but you would have to work for the meal and working would be uh, building the building, okay? And my Uncle Jaime was the person who was in charge. He was a, a mason and a builder, and um, some of the hobos, you know, told other hobos. So my father had a, a, a ready source of supply, and um, my mother loved feeding him, and it worked out very well. I got married in 1929. I came along in 1930. And by that time, he was also making knives, forks, and spoons. So when I was in the eighth grade, I was making knives, forks, and spoons. Uh, as a matter of fact, with present P and 8, Steve Bartick owned that building. Mm -hmm. And on the second floor, we would get red handles put them in a, a pot of steaming water, the plastic red handles would swell, and then we would tap the handle onto the tang of the fork or knife. And it was called diner quality, which meant it was a low quality mm -hmm. knife, fork, and spoon. So he paid me 15 cents an hour, but my mother made him pay me a quarter an hour. So I, was, <laughs> so I got a quarter an hour, and of course those were days when you know, gas was a nickel, and and foot's ice cream was 10 cents. From there, uh, I went to high school, and in high school, my father had the Army contract for the Army mess kit knife. Okay. And so in 19, I was 13, 14, 15 years old, I was making the Army mess kit knife. And at the time, I also learned how to operate a rolling mill and a slitter and a cut the length line, which he had recently installed. From there I went to um, uh, prep school, Deerfield Academy, and then Brown University, and then the U.S. Army for three years. So I've only had three jobs in my whole life. One, I've been a student. Secondly, I've been a corporal in the U.S. Army. And third, I've worked for Albrick. And I enjoyed every minute all three of them. I still do enjoy the job that I have now. I uh, joined the Army. I was in during the Korean War, but I never got outside the uh, continent of the United States. I went to basic training and then advanced basic training. And then I went to school to be a counterintelligence corps person. And what I did was I uh, gave background checks on people who were going to be exposed to confidential secret or top secret information. They had to fill out a form when they were born, where they go to school, who were their neighbors, credit references, character references, and then I would go and check them. I wore civilian clothes, mm -hmm. and essentially I was a background investigator, and my uh, area of uh, responsibility was the state of New Hampshire and York County, Maine. I'm sure I'm the only person who the Army sent to to um, New Hampshire. Korea was fighting South Korea, and a North Korean pilot stole a MiG jet and, and uh, flew it to South Korea. 
And uh, I read in the newspaper that CIA took that jet apart to find out what, how it was made. And part of the material that was made is what we would call 177PH, precipitation hardening alloy. And it was 001, 0015, and 003. Now, we had to learn how to do that. Very difficult, very expensive. Uh, the training is uh, on-the-job training because we're all learning. And then from 003, we had to go down to 1,000, th three times thinner than the human hair, a whole new world. And the Department of Defense wanted to find out how many uh, companies in the United States could produce this thin gauge. And as it turned out, there were 16. We all got an order for uh, 1,000 pounds of 001, three times thinner than human hair, of this new alloy, which was very difficult to roll. And out of the 16 candidates, only six of us actually made the medal in six months. And that put us in a different league. So that's what I did. And when I got out of the service in 1956, I went back to Oldbrook and my father was expanding. He had no organizational structure at all. We had one full-time person, Henry Furs, downstairs in production. Um, his youngest sister, Mae Wazoka, was the office manager. We had two or three full-time office managers. So when I got there and I knew a lot about the business because in the summer times I would always work there, uh, I had the opportunity to start any department I wanted. So I started the sales department, credit and, and advertising. Okay, So I had the opportunity, which most people don't have, and um, over the course of time, I've held every position in the company except treasurer. He didn't, he didn't trust me with the checkbook. <laughs> and uh, accounting, okay. And then eventually I became president in 1970, became chairman in 1990, and chairman of the board in 1995, when my brother Dick took over as chairman and so I became chairman emeritus. Then regrettably he passed away, so I went back to uh, my job as chairman. So that's a, a quick synopsis of my history with Ulbrich.